we are looking at the grade 11 November prac exam for RT from 2018 um, and we're dealing with the final question question four is first part so this question is to do with arrays and sub programs so we're probably going to create a couple of functions and procedures and they're going to be interacting with some sort of arrays okay so we've got a menu that is stored electronically uh, so therefore we're going to use that so there's probably going to be arrays of things so there's a menu items that are stored in an array called array item and each item has a f or a d at the end to indicate if it's a food or drink the cost price excluding that of each item is stored in a constant array called array cost now i'm assuming that is a parallel array i haven't specified that but i'm assuming that so whatever is in position one of the array item array the cost for that item will be in position one of the array cost array that makes sense if we go look at the program there's the program let's go look at the top little bit there you can see array item goes from 1 to 22 and then array cost also goes till 22 and that would be the cost i think for item number one and so on i think if you look here there you can see all the different items and you can see there's a hash and then an f at the end or a hash and a d if it's a food or a drink item okay now that we understand the context of this program and what do they want us to do for the first question write a sort method okay which will sort the array item in an alphabetical order the correct price must still correspond with the correct item mm. so when we move things around in the array item array we're going to have to do the same movement in the array cost for example if we swap items one and two in the array item array then the corresponding costs in one and two must also swap if that makes sense and it must be a method now they, there's nothing that says must it must be returned there's nothing being returned so we're going to make this a procedure and we're just going to call it sort so let's go to our program it's just a simple sort procedure so you can make them public or private i'm just going to make them over here that's it's up to you where you want to put them um they don't actually specify where you must put them so i'm going to make a procedure called sort which takes in no parameters i'll just leave it like that Okay, they did say no parameters there. Eh? No, no parameters. Okay, so this is our sort. So I'm going to press Control Shift C, and it will take me to the part of the code which will do the sort algorithm. Now, if you don't know how to do a sort of an array, um, you can go look at our videos. We've got two videos: one for a selection sort and one for a bubble sort. I've got uh, a little cheat sheet over here which tells you the algorithm for a sort array. There's the selection. There's the bubble. Um, so this is code that is recipe code. I recommend that you learn it off by heart. Learn one of the sorts. I've never seen them ask in the exam paper that you must do the bubble sort or must do the selection sort. They could ask that in a prac in a theory exam, sorry, where they could ask you questions on the sort algorithm. But in, in a prac exam, they just want you to sort the array. So you can choose which one you want to learn. I like the selection sort just it's easier to learn for me i think there's one more mistake i'm just add a plus one there but that's fine so this is the recipe if you learn it off by heart you can do this question very quickly and it saves you time for the other questions so in this case it's literally not i'm not explaining this you can go look at the video on how a uh, selection sort works you just need to know this algorithm so we're going to have two loops so let's go yeah to the loops let's go we're going to have two looping variables I'm going to use, what did I use in that? K and L. So let's go K and L, and they're going to be of type integer. And we are going to have a for loop, which we say the K one is going to go from one till the array size of minus one. Now, in this case, they haven't given us a variable that tells me how many elements are in the array. That we, we They've basically said that this array will always be full till 22. So we need to go till 1 before 22. So we're going to go till 21, from 1 till 21. That's what we're going to do, OK? If there was a variable that told you how many elements were actually in the array, then you would go, like, for example, n. You would go from 1 till n minus 1. That's the first loop. The second loop for l goes from 1 after k. So one after this k position till the end of the array, which in this case we know is going to be 22. So those are my two 
variable. So, okay, this is the end of the L loop. Okay, so what are we doing? We want to check if, and we want to sort it in alphabetical order. Did they, how do they want it sorted? What did they say? They want it sorted in alphabetical order according to the item. Okay, so we're looking at the item array. If that position K in ascending order is bigger than array item L, not squarely brackets, square brackets, Mr. Long. In other words, if the position, if the value in K is like an S and the, the L is an, a B, that means it's in the, that's the right order, but if it's, if it's slightly bigger, then we want to swap them, okay? If it's greater than, if I remember if that's right, let's look at my algorithm. If the K is greater than L, then we want to swap them. Okay, so we need a swap variable or a variable of the same type. So it's an array of strings. So I'm going to make an S temp variable of type string. So if the swap happens, remember you must have begin end here for this if statement. Otherwise, it's only going to do one part of the swap. We want to put in S temp, we want to put one of those values. Let's put array item K in there. So now that we've stored array item K, we can now change whatever was in K. to be what is now currently in L. So take L's value, put it into K. Now that's okay because we've recorded what K is in S temp. So we haven't lost the value for that. So now in L, we can give it the new S temp variable. The way I remember it is S temp must equal to a position and that position must go there and that position must go there and then temp loops around. Okay, does that make sense? Fantastic. But Whatever swap we do in the array temp array, we must do the same in the cost array. So if we swap one and two, we must in over here, let's say we swap, if we swap those two around, we then also need to swap those two values around. Okay. So we're going to also need to have a temp variable for the cost, which is a real variable, so a real temp. And so whenever we do this swap, you can almost copy and paste it. We're going to do the exact same swap, but this time we are going to do it with the array cost variable, which is a real so array cost must go there. So instead of array item, we're going to use array cost. Array cost. Array cost. And this is going to be the R temp variable. So do the swap with array temp then do the swap with the array cost. Okay, and that is our sort algorithm. Now we can't test it because we haven't called it yet, um, but we'll see later, maybe later on, we'll obviously need to use this in some sort of um, other question, so then we can test it then to see if it works. So there is our sort algorithm done. For the other questions, for question four, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.